With me now is UFC prospect Miranda Maverick. What a pleasure it is. Good to meet you. How are you today? Good to meet you too. I'm good. Good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, first things first, I was scrolling through your Instagram, doing a little Insta stalking, uh, and you had a photo, this one right here, saying, my life is a movie in my own mind. Talking about movies, if you could have any actor play you and the story of your life, which actor would you want that to be? Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> Take a second. This is a wow, tough one. That's, that's a really hard one. I don't know if they would be actors or anything, but... Uh, like the stunt doubles sometimes I think would almost be a better job of it. Like Jessie Graff and stuff. I think she's just cool as can be. Um, I don't really keep up with the actresses too well though. I'd want somebody that wasn't like a, a fake Victoria's Secret model. Like, a, you know, the Wonder Woman actress. I'd like her to be like muscular, stocky-ish. Something like that. But look into the ideas. I gotcha, I gotcha. I feel like for me it would have to be like a Leo DiCaprio Maybe a Brad Pitt, just because of our stunning resemblance, you know? Oh, right, right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, well, it, in that case, maybe like Scarlett Johansson or something, you know? <laughs> that's right, 100%. You, you had said uh, also in that caption uh, that the photographer who took that photo was making you look like the next Karate Kid star. If that opportunity, mm -hmm. if they were making another Karate Kid, would you, would you fulfill that role? I feel like you should. Sure, why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah, it would I mean, make I'm sense. I'm not usually the big advocate for karate, but if it's the karate kid, I'll do it. <laughs> it would make sense. You have the martial arts background. Of course, you, you, you can really make it look like you're not too good at first. You know, someone would have to train you. Yeah. And then by the end, you'd be like a freaking monster. They'd be like, wow, there you go. stunning growth right here. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. I mean, I would definitely do that. I think it's a great idea. And then the whole like wax on, wax off, we could just like make a farm in you windows instead. Like when I grew up on the farm. <laughs> I actually feel like uh, I should be in contention to be your coach uh, because of my two-month jiu-jitsu journey and my one-hour free boxing class. And also, I have studied extensively the coaching from Karate Kid. The wax on, wax off, I have mastered that art. Okay. Well, there you go. You could just come up with me in the rankings as I learned, you know, in the movie. Damn right. Don't forget about me when you get that role, please. I would love to be the head coach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in your UFC debut at the weigh-ins, did your opponent really say, uh, I will kill you? Yeah, just like that. Um, I think somebody set her up to it, honestly. Like, she seemed so nervous, and it was really awkward. So she went up there. I had my mask on. She did not, for one. And she was just like, I will kill you. And it was like, and I just kind of laughed. And then she tried to shake my hand afterwards and smiled. And I was like, do you even know what you said? I'm not shaking your hand. <laughs> like, I feel like that is probably the most comical part about it, that she did try to shake her hand after it's like, would you shake her hand back and be like, best of luck to you in trying to kill me? It doesn't really make sense. Yeah, no, and it was just, I think her coaches or somebody were like, say this, intimidate her, and I think she was like nervous to say it, because she was nice to me before that too. We were like in line together, and I had to tell her something, because uh, she wasn't like understanding the English somebody was telling her. And then, uh, so I was trying to help her out and she was nice enough to me then. And then once we got to weigh and she did that and I was like, are you serious? Quit it. <laughs> you know what? It brings us more hype. It gets more attention and it gives me more motivation and to go in there and beat her butt. <laughs> now did, and this is what everyone's wanting. Did it intimidate Miranda Maverick at all? No, no. I found it amusing though. I don't think any of that stuff intimidates me. If anything, it just shows me that they have a weakness, you know. I don't care if they're genuine and mean about it or not. I find it amusing. And like I go in there, I'm usually a typically a nice person, you know. I don't really like beating up or hurting girls, but when they give me motivation to do it, it makes it more fun to go in there and beat them. Yeah, I understand, you know, because I, I've been involved in the sport and media since I was 11, 12 years old. So I understand like the, the, the need or why people trash talk. But I just don't think it's necessary. Martial arts, really, when you look at its core, it's all about respect. You know, it's not about hurting your opponent. It's about respect going in there and really like just showing the skills that you've trained so hard for. I really wish sometimes mixed martial arts would just kind of stop the trash talk. But, you know, pay-per-views, you know, it's well that and it's an entertainment industry at the end of the day it just is what it is all sports are kind of like that um you know you find a couple people that find success by their trash talking and then it becomes everybody trying to be that ingenuine trash talker which is why I don't think I ever will it's just not something that comes naturally to me I'm just going to be myself yeah well it's certainly working out for you so to win your UFC debut at UFC 254 put that into words for me how did that feel 
uh, it was my dream, you know, my dream come true. I couldn't ask for a better debut. I had tried to have mine earlier this past, this uh, June, I think it was, that fell through. And I was happy that I got in October. It ended up being on the biggest card of 2020. It got me probably 10 times more exposure. Um, I loved it. And of course, the result of the fight was also amazing as well. I got to show my skills, go out there and show a different part of me with the striking that I'd ever shown before. Your striking looked absolutely phenomenal in that fight. Everyone knew going into that fight that you have a fantastic ground game. I know after the fight you were saying that you really did kind of want that knockout. Uh, but but do, do you believe that you did show that you do have really great striking even though it wasn't a knockout? I think I definitely surprised people. I think I showed them that I did have striking when they weren't expecting it. Um, and yeah, I think I showed everything I needed to, honestly, even though I didn't get the knockout. The only reason I wanted to have my hands on her when I finished her was people are always doubting or like, if it would have went another round, blah, 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 I'm going to mouth off or whatever. And I'd rather just have sealed the deal myself instead of a doctor stopping it. But I honestly think it's a good stoppage looking back. Like I would have just targeted her nose more in the second round. It would have been way worse than it was um, and hard for her to recover. I think her face would have fallen off if it went another round. I, I, I would have to agree with you. I think it was a pretty good stoppage. Yeah, it would have just been like filleted open the longer they would have let it happen. So, <laughs> Yep, that, that is certainly not a pretty image. So you talked with Dana White after. I saw you post on your Instagram. What was that conversation? Uh, it was basically me telling him I wish I would have shown him more. Uh, thank you for welcoming me into the division, into the UFC. And he was like, don't worry, we saw plenty. And I was also joking with him. Uh, earlier when I had first met him, he didn't know who I was um, and didn't recognize my name. And I told him that he would remember it later. And uh, so after the fight, I was like, do you remember my name now? And he was like, yeah, yeah. So you were five years into the sport of MMA. You're already in the UFC. Tra you, I believe you started training BJJ at 16 years old. That must feel great. Is everything kind of going to the plan that you've kind of visualized for yourself? <clears throat> My own dreams are to get to the UFC as fast as I could. So if I had been 18 and gotten there, that would have been the ultimate goal, you know. But uh, as far as timeline and everything else I've achieved in life, I think I'm right on par with what I would have expected and hoped for. Uh, when I first started out my, my journey, I kind of expected to be an Invicta by the time I was 21. Got there when I was 19, and um, now I'm in the UFC at 23, and I'm still pursuing school and everything in the meantime. So I'm hoping once my education opportunities are done with, I can either focus on MMA for full time or decide kind of a part time job and then MMA. But I'm thinking I'm far enough in the UFC or will be by the time I'm done with my education that I can just put my other career paths to the side, which was the goal to begin with anyway, was to have a backdrop to fall back on with my education. And now I'll have that opportunity and also have my success in MMA. Yeah, I, I feel like you're right on par uh, and you're actually further along than most fighters. Uh, I, I think the future is very bright for you. That has been well publicized that in addition to fighting. Uh, you are uh, currently pursuing your PhD in psychology. I have no idea how you do it because I'm right now along with my twin sister. We're, we're, we're in a, a master's program here in St. Louis, St. Louis University, pursuing uh, social work. And that is grueling. And, you know, of course, it's all virtual and all that, but it is grueling. I have no idea. How you're, how you're pursuing a PhD, training, competing, that is just mind-boggling to me. Yeah, mine's in industrial psychology, and I actually have my computer right here. I was working right before uh, I went on this meeting. Um, I'm just working constantly, you know. I keep my schedule very tight. I don't goof off or do stuff in my free time, really. Like, every once in a while, I'll have dinner with somebody or spend time with friends, but um, for the most part, like I'm never going on vacation or doing anything like that. And even when I'm getting ready for fights, when I'm in Colorado cross training, I bring my schoolwork with me and I'm working on it constantly. So it, it is a grind. It's hard. I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, you know, um, you gotta have a lot of discipline and my stress levels are so high. You gotta have a lot of, uh, ways to cope with that as well. This is a social work question, but what are some of those ways you do cope with that? It's such a busy schedule. Mm, I write out like a lot of my problems. Sometimes I keep a very, very detailed planner, like down to the 30 minute marks, write out everything ahead of time. Um, and then just stick to a routine, honestly. Like once you get one week of going steady and then the next week you do the exact same things, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, adding in, for instance, interviews and things is where it gets kind of difficult sometimes. 
um, and traveling. Like I'm, I'm going to a chiropractor right now, so that's a pain in the butt. But okay. now that school classes have kind of eased down and finals are on the way, uh, it's just been uh, well, the next two weeks and the previous week have been killer. Well, I have an overwhelming feeling that hard work is going to pay off for you. Before we go, tell me some of those uh, short-term goals for the remainder this year. For 2021, what will those look like for you? Uh, 2020 doesn't look like I'll have a fight coming up in 2020, but hopefully early 2021 I'll hear some news from a matchmaker. It seems like the whole flyweight division has been fighting the last two weeks and into the next month. Uh, so hopefully I'll have uh, some good opponents lined up for me. Um, I'm wanting to get my pay a little bit higher before I fight some of those top girls. Uh, first, I wanted to jump right in, but as far as financially, it would make sense to be able to renegotiate my contract before I fought one of the top ranked girls when they would be getting paid way more than I do just from winning and they'd be losing. Um, so as far as that goes, I want a couple fights by mid next year, hopefully four fights by the end of the year. Um, might be taking short notices too, going to try to stay in shape ready for that. And then uh, aside from that, I'll have my master's hopefully by May and most of my classes done towards my PhD as well. Yeah. Well, Miranda, keep up the phenomenal work. I appreciate you making time in that busy schedule of yours. I'm going to leave the floor to you. Anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, how can people find you on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff? Yep. Faith is first. God's first. Um, I want to thank my family too, always supporting me. Um, and then my coaches and teammates at the House of Muay Thai and my old gym, Springfield Fight Club. Um, I'm here in Virginia doing school with Old Dominion University, so my professors have been pretty helpful in supporting me through the process there. And then, of course, all my sponsors, but you can go and find them on my Instagram at fearthemaverick underscore H-O-M-T, and then Miranda Maverick on everything else. Um, I'm pretty much the only one out there. Twitter is at fearthemaverick as well.